Jealous Hellfire with MachineMasters.com. And I just wanted to quickly go over the new mixer workflow for uh, some of the people that seem to be having some confusion with how the new mixer works. So um, I'm going to show you basically how it works with the sample bass project as well as with uh, instrument projects and uh, specifically multi timbral instrument projects. So uh, right here I have a, a sample bass project loaded up. And uh, I'm just going to walk through, you through how I would mix this this type of project. So first and foremost, um, I'm just going to say again, um, audio is no longer running through the tracks. It's now running through the programs. So these basically just modify the velocity for the pads that's used on this uh, specific track. And all audio um, volume is controlled by the actual pads or the programs. So anybody that's uh, familiar with MPCs knows that this is basically how MPCs have always worked. Legacy MPCs never had track audio. You know, you always just had tracks on the main screen, which are basically MIDI tracks, just like these are now. So basically this mixer was just reverted back to the original uh, MPC style mixer. And on those uh, tracks on your main screen of your legacy MPCs, you had a little velocity um, field on there where you can go and change the volume of the track. And it went from zero to 127 or, or on some older MPCs, zero to 200. So that's basically all this is. And these, just like in the older MPCs, these were independent per sequence, just like the mutes were and just like the solos were. So this is really nothing new. It's just, it's really something old. So uh, people who aren't familiar with the MPC, the original MPC workflow, um, probably wouldn't understand this. And people who are um, familiar with the uh, new M the old MPC workflow probably just may be used to the original MPC Renaissance workflow and may not understand that basically everything was is back to normal. So let me just go over how this is. So I got my beat here. So let's take a look at this first track here, uh, my sample. Um, you can see that this track is going to this program here. Now let's just say I wanted to change the volume of this track. Um, I have two sequences here. I'm just gonna change, lower the sample here. Now watch what happens when I change sequences. Now my track volume is up. Now obviously since this, these samples are all chopped from the same program, I would want the volume to be the same throughout my entire project. So what I would do in that case is I wouldn't even touch this uh, fader. I would make all my volume changes from the pr actual program, which is here. So if I wanted to say that was the volume I wanted it at, I would move the program, jump to my next sequence, and you can see my volume change followed right through. And uh, the same is true for the uh, the pans and the, the mute and solo, as well as your inserts. All right, so let me just put that back up. Now, here I have my drums. And you can see my three drums are all uh, going to the same program, which is this one. So let's see what happens when I move my drum program. All the drums drop down, but I may not want all the drums to drop down. I may only want, let's say I just want my snare to drop down. I drop my snare. Okay, that's the volume I like for the snare. Now again, I go to my next sequence and now my snare is up loud again. So that's not something I would want unless this, this sequence was a completely different uh, beat. 
since it's the same beat, I want my snare to be the same volume in every sequence. So in this case, what I would do is I would click my snare track here and I would jump to the pad mixer. And I do this from the hardware usually. I would set this to show um, pads with the vents. And then I would just lower my uh, my two snare pads evenly. Now this I would do from the hardware since there's two of them. I would just cursor down to the two uh, the two pad fields on the on the actual hardware, and I would just drop it down a couple decibels one at a time, so I can keep them even. Or you can just drag them. It's up to you. But you'll notice that now, you know, when I drop these two, these two pads down to the volume I want, and I go to my next sequence, now they're the same volume now in every sequence. So that's how I would mix um, sample bass projects. I would mix, I would mix my actual chopped up sample from. Uh, the program side of the mixer and I would mix my uh, my my drums in the same program from the actual pad mixer I really wouldn't use these at all because if you um, use these to modify the volume of uh, of your tracks then you're gonna have to copy these settings to every sequence you uh, you want those those changes to take place in um, I've done that too on some projects what I do is I just on my phone I take a picture of the one sequence that I want to model and all the other sequences and then I just go through on the hardware through each sequence and just punch in the numbers of each track in the track mixer and likewise if I want let's say I wanted a reverb on just a snare here I would uh I wouldn't put it on the drum track I would just go into my pad mixer and then I would put my reverb inserts right on here and then that will put a snare a reverb on my snare in uh, every um, single sequence now another thing you can do is um, which might be a little bit more tedious if you don't like going into the pad mixer back and forth between the track mixer and pad mixer what you can do is you can actually duplicate the program for each of your tracks so each track will have its own program and then you can just mix from over here alone and I, like I say let's say I take my snare track and let's say I'll duplicate this okay now my snare is on a new program here so I would I would name that snare and then when I go back into the mixer, I now have a channel specifically for my snare. Then you would just assign that same duplicate program to the same track in all the sequences. So you can see that on this particular beat, I use two pads um, on that same track there. So if I were to use the pad mixer, I would have to adjust both pads at the same time to get the overall snare level the way I want. But now that I have a uh, program dedicated specifically to my snare whatever I do here is gonna affect both of those uh, snare pads so I can put my inserts directly on here and both of those snare pads are gonna run through this channel and be affected the same way in all of my sequences and you can go through and do that for each one of your tracks if you want to and that way you you would never have to even go into the pad mixer if if you don't like so that's just an alternate workflow I personally just use the same program and I just jump back and forth between these two just to because I don't like duplicating programs but it's not really a big deal it's up to however you want to work so let me just load up a um, instrument based pro uh, project and we'll just see how I work this one all right, let me make sure this loaded up. Oh, 
Okay, so you can see, and I'll go in here. This is a, a fairly heavy uh, Contact 5 base project. I pr basically use Contact 5 one instance for every single track, except I have one uh, sample, one drum base track here. But basically everything, including my drums, is all in this one instance of Contact um, spread across eight tracks seven here and then the eighth one here so again let me pull up the uh contact gui if you notice this volume here um in this pan here uh with instrument plugins those are controlled by your actual uh midi channel um strip so if i move this here you're gonna see it's gonna move up here right but again that's not um, unified um, throughout all sequences and the same thing with the pan you'll see this pan move when I move here right so let's say I change my volume here in this sequence and then I go to the next sequence and you see now the volume is back up here so the way I would I would do this is uh I will put this back, put that back to what it was. And then you can basically just use, mix this directly in here with your mouse. And then that's going to have it uh, stay the same for every sequence. So now when I play this and I jump to my next sequence, you can see it didn't move. Now. The, the other thing here you'll notice is that if you touch one of these track faders, it's going to move that back to where it was. So as long as you don't touch one of these faders, um, this volume control will continue to override whatever this fader is. You know, when I keep switching back and forth between sequences. You'll see that volume and contact doesn't move. But the minute I touch this fader, it's going to jump back up and sync with it. You can see that. And you know, that depends on how you want to work. If you're going to mix from here, again, you're going to have to copy the, uh, the settings from this sequence to every other sequence, which can be a real pain when you have a whole bunch of sequences. And I have projects with you know over 16 tracks so you do that 16 tracks times four sequences that's a lot of switching around uh, of, of volumes between the tracks especially when you're constantly tweaking levels and you know pans and stuff so another thing you can do is again instead of using one instance of contact here you can see again I have everything in this entire beat in this one instance of contact um, what you can do is just use a separate instance of contact for each uh, library that you want to use if you have the CPU to, to support multiple instances of a plugin like this. Um, with the new multi-core um, um, addition to 1.7, that should be a, a lot more easier to take on for uh, um, some people's computers than it was in 1.6. Um, so that's another solution. So if you were to use um, sing single instances for each one of these libraries, then you would have program channels here where um, you can mix each, each uh, track or each instance of Contact 5. But in this particular um, scenario for me, um, obviously I don't want to put plugins on here because it's going to affect the entire beat. So when I work like this, I basically use the built-in effects for each, um, each module here, each, uh, plugin here. So if I want to put a, a certain effect on my strings, if you go in here, um, contact has a bunch of different, 
uh, effects built in that you can use, like EQs and compressors, reverbs and delays and stuff. So I usually mix through here if I want to, you know, mix these tracks separately. Or I may just export this all to WAV file and just uh, mix it in Pro Tools. So, you know, there's a lot of different options available to you. It's just, you know, you got to choose the right one that fits your workflow and uh, what you find the most efficient. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, hopefully you guys are able to understand. If not, drop some comments and I'll try to answer the questions as soon as I can. Peace.